It's a bumpy day as we ride the heat waves above our Australian city in a light aeroplane of the Royal Aero Club of New South Wales. Down there below us, Australian metropolitan life is just getting underway and all roads lead to town. Long before the day of the famous Australian sailing clippers, men and women were turning their eyes to new worlds across the seas and to the chance to break with tradition and the humdrum lives some of them had known. As transport improved, more of these people stopped dreaming and did something about it. This passenger liner is shown arriving at Sydney, one of the world's busiest ports and a modern city of more than a million people. The city which rose from out of the Australian wilderness in just over a century and a half. But it's the usual same old story. Wherever men and women have come together down through history, they have in time fallen back on their instincts for civilization and have built their cities, and in Australia, mostly cities in the sun. In these Australian sun cities, which some of us have called American, and some Americans describe as English, the theme seems to be the 20th century, and the atmosphere is one of gay colours, whether we're looking at Australian city taxicabs or pretty girls. Colours bloom from the many flower stalls, too, in what seems to the visitor to be a pleasant world of summery dresses with a background of street photographers, fruit barrow men, shouting newsboys, and smart shopping centres, which in character can only be described as modern Australia, and every day, among these shops and byways of Australia's cities, there is always one or another quite simple display to turn the head of some visitor. I'd like half a dozen bananas and a nice ripe pawpaw. I'd like a small one, please. And a dozen oranges. And have you any grapes? <laughs> But whilst some Australians like their sunshine, there are others who prefer the cool indoor world of their cities, a world ranging from art galleries to department stores, with their beauty treatments even for the young, and their occasional fashion parades, which have also taken place in the air over the city. But there's always that moment when it's time to go home. For our metropolitan life anywhere is a noisy life, and Australian city workers living outside town appreciate the end of the day. This must be what they call in Australia the Battle of Six O'Clock. But for some Australians, the working day isn't over yet. And for others, the moment has come to put on the glad rags and go into town. For your Australian city, after sundown, has become its other self. An even pleasanter world of happy hospitality and smiles. The lights are on, and there'll be good eating and music. So bring on your black ties and your chiffons, or your popcorn and your peanuts, but hurry, for in your Australian city, the world has begun. Sunrise, 
on Australian shores. Sunshine again on our Australian city. Not much doing about at this hour, but there's life in them there canyons of steel and concrete as the sun pours through on the early morning scene. Who's that, by the way? Oh yes, we know him. And we know him too. And him. That's familiar too. Yes, it's really peaceful around our Australian city in the early morning. But as the day moves on, the pace begins to quicken. Things begin to stir around the city. the same old story. We eat, we sleep, and we go to work. And by the way, who was it spoke of the Australian unhurried way of life? And now it's happened. It's 9 a.m. and life in our Australian city is well underway. Business day is on, and the wheels of commerce turn for the men and women of this place they call Down Under. Australia is a big country, but with only about seven million people representing the nation, and most of them living around the cities. So today in Australia, some major plans are taking shape. Plans to welcome many millions of new Australians to the nation, and plans for the even better and wider enlightenment of Australia's rising generations to help guarantee this young nation as the world power she is already fast becoming and cultural centre of the Southern Hemisphere. Australia has her post-war problems like other nations which stripped for the emergency years. And today it can be said that there's work ahead for Australia and an outstanding future awaiting her industrial development. Soon the communication systems which today link each capital city in Australia may be expected to spread out into a much greater network, bringing more manpower to contribute to the nation's evidence of human ingenuity and the vigorous Australian spirit of progress. And now as the sun casts its long shadows again across Australian metropolitan life, it's time for some of us to move on. But somehow it's not easy to say our goodbyes to this sight which so many of us will look forward to seeing again. An Australian city, a city in the sun. What do you reckon, Bill? The city? She'll do me. Me too. That's my city. Mm -hmm.